Hey guys, and welcome back to Rage Gaming. Today we're talking more Dragon's Dogma 2, with the release getting really, really close now. In prep for that release, we're creating videos dedicated to the vocations of the game, aka the classes we're going to play. In today's video, though, I'm talking about the commonly paired fighters and warriors. The fighter is a starting vocation, meaning you can pick and play it right from the beginning of the game, where the warriors are an advanced vocation. That means you're going to need to find the right vocation master for warriors to then learn from them. They'll teach you if you form a positive relationship with them. And from the website's list of characters, it does look like Lenart here is going to be the master we're looking for. He's kind of a fighter type, but he probably has knowledge on warriors based on his description as an exceptional swordsman. But why are the fighters and warriors so commonly paired? Well, it's because if you're going to play a warrior, it's a high chance you're going to start out as a fighter to then go on to unlock the warrior. Augments the passives of each vocation. They can be equipped by other vocations once you've unlocked them in the first place. And with the fighter ones being somewhat useful to the warrior, like extra physical defense, on top of that they have similar equipment that they use and a similar vibe. It's just a pair that often gets well paired. However, they do serve completely different purposes, so let's cover them both in this video. We'll begin with a classic fighter though, what kind of role it plays in the party. This vocation wants to get up close and personal. All the attention should be on them. Wielding a one-hand weapon and a shield, they can shout nasty combos while never letting the enemy really break their guard. Raw blocking is reliable and extremely helpful, but even better than that is timing that defense to instead parry, smashing aside the enemy attack and leaving them now exposed. And we're not talking about just regular enemies. There's many clips of bigger enemies being parried and then punished in response. And the thing is, despite the fact that the fighter is using a shield and wants the attention on them, you shouldn't entirely view this as a defensive vocation. The control the fighter brings to the fight is immense, and with their physical strength, they're also able to throw enemies around, shield bash enemies to the ground, or stagger massive foes, even launching allies up if they need to. They're also able to gap close effectively, heading to the weak or important targets behind the group. And unlike other vocations, it can even kind of Dark Souls style roll, which does appear to mitigate or completely ignore enemy attacks. All of that's great, but it is a single-minded physical approach, which will leave them relying on the party for ranged options and anything elemental, but they are incredibly helpful to have on the team for the purpose they serve. Let's now talk about the different skills we know about. Firstly, there is the basic and heavy attack in Onslaught and Impale. That's essentially basic swings, and then the thrust we see commonly used in the gameplay. That thrust seems to pierce weaker enemies and could be followed up with another Impale if it does land. In the same way, that can be used from a jump to, say, do a plunge attack or do a critical punish on a downed or stunned enemy for good damage. On the side of the shield though, we have the defend and deflect options. Pretty obvious stuff. They're all blocking that we can keep up a reliable guard or turn around with pretty effectively, just costing stamina instead of true damage. But the deflect is the parry, slapping the attack away entirely and leaving enemies vulnerable. We see in the fighter trailer, the fighter parry even a bigger enemy. And then they go for a hefty combo, at one point two-handing the sword for even more damage. So guarding and parrying will be vital as part of surviving all the attention you're probably going to have as this vocation. But then we have the weapon skills like the airward slash we see, which simply looks like a jump up and sort of slash or uppercut. This will help you reach higher for targets above you or weak spots that might just be out of reach normally. We also see blink strike, a very common and very good ability. It's that classic dash forward with a nice thrust at the end as a really common gap closing attack you'll see fighters doing. It's very effective. You can reach targets extremely quickly. In a lot of the footage though, we also saw players using compass slash, which is essentially a nice AOE circle attack, which should be great when you're surrounded by weaker foes. Another thing we saw was shield bash, ramming the shield against the target, which seems to be a great source of blunt and staggering damage used to knock down enemies or help bring down a bigger foe. So having that on hand whenever you need to punish a foe that's almost going down seems very useful. Further in other footage, we see the classic springboard, which is basically a way to launch allies off your shield, helping them get around difficult terrain or maybe launching something like a thief right at their weak point up high. Another skill we see is a kind of ton, where the fighter is wrapping their shield to draw the attention on themselves functioning like an AOE taunt to get the attention off your allies. So all of that's pretty classic fighter to me, but still I think there's going to be even more options in the full game. We've only got this from limited footage. In terms of the augments to unlock via the fighter though, we know there's things like metal for increased physical defense, provocation to make enemies more likely to attack you, and then another one just to increase weight load as another example. If the weight management proves to be important and a bit of a problem in this game, then I could imagine a lot of people just trying fighter for a bit just to get that passive. But that's fighter in general. Let's now talk about the heavy hitting counterpart, 
the Warrior. These heavy weapon users can use either massive hammers or the two-handed great swords, slamming and smashing out huge blows after longer wind-ups. Having said that, they can do the shorter, faster swings, and there is a neat mechanic to do with that, where if you time the next attack right as your current one lands, the next one comes out faster. So conceptually, these guys are just dealing huge hits in exchange for their slow swings. Just be aware that when you're going to be charging attacks like that, that will require good awareness of when you need to actually do a charge or just let it go to actually actually land your blows rather than entirely missing. And obviously you'll ideally want to be hitting a weak point with those big hits. The raw tenacity of the warrior should allow them to bowl through enemy attacks to make sure theirs land though. And compared to the fighter, you will notice much heavier hits and even bigger staggers, but a lot less agility and mobility compared. Now let's cover the skills shown so far, like the core skills of Mighty Sweep and Stone Splitter. That's basically your light and heavy attacks, but you know, they're all heavy. The sweeps allow for the cleaving style swings, which can be good in AoE, while stone splitters are more like slamming and spiking downwards. Sweep is that one that you can speed up though. You can follow it with another sweep right as the original one lands, and that'll trigger a faster follow-up. And that'll occur each time you successfully do that. We see that displayed by a flashing sword and even sound effect during the gameplay in the trailer, and it looks very effective. But you shouldn't forget that many skills the warrior can use, like sweep, are gonna be chargeable, which means you'll hold the attack and then let it go as soon as it's fully charged for an even heavier hit. But of course, you'll have to be smart about when and how to use that. The splitter can punish enemies really well. You can plunge down onto a foe with a leap or punish the off balance or knock down enemies with some insane damage. On your R1, we see the barge ability, very much Monster Hunter Great Swordy. You'll barge your way through whatever's thrown at you. It looks like you can use it to counter and ignore whatever's been thrown at you at the time, creating then a window of opportunity to attack from, but it's something that you don't expect to like prevent damage but it does look like it's got good force behind it to maybe stagger or knock an enemy down. Generally though, I expect like the original warrior that you will have flinch and stagger protection while you're doing things like charging and barging, as well as improvements to the actual raw damage of an attack if you let it fly the moment it hits its full charge. Moving on though, we also see weapon skills like Skyward Sunder, a leap up and swing which can even be charged as well. That's going to be great for reaching up high to reach an enemy weak point or dragging the weapon against the body of a large foe. Meanwhile, you've got Rending Sweep, which is more horizontal, spinning the weapon in an arc. This is great for hitting multiple targets around the warrior, good for grouped enemies. We actually see a look at that in the trailer footage where it destroys this entire group of regular enemies in one go, even breaking the guard of one instantly. Also in that trailer, we see in the opening, the warrior slam the weapon down into a target, impaling them, and then turning and slamming them into the ground right after, killing them. This looks like a pretty impactful command grab against normal enemies. In another clip, we see the warrior landing this insane hit that looks like it's a counter. The Cyclops goes for a hit, and the warrior kind of interrupts it with a similar looking attack to Skyward Sunder. So either that's a different ability, or Skyward has that effect, maybe if you upgrade it. Later, the warrior then roars before approaching this drake. This looks like it could be a taunt, much like the fighters. The drake clearly turns to the warrior in reaction, so forcing the foe to attack you is a choice you could have. I think the reason for that is to create a manner of predictability to the enemy's movements and also their attacks. When it's focused on you, you're focused on it, and it's understandable. When it's randomly flailing against whatever pawn or group you're in, it can be a bit awkward. And lastly, we also see the warrior standing on the drake at the end of the trailer, charging a kind of mini combo ability, a bit of a swing and then a smash down. Warrior originally had weapon skills that could be charged to great effect for even longer longer times, so I expect that's just one of them. Those are just some of the weapon skills I could spot, but in terms of augments, we should expect the warrior to provide things like vitality, so an increase to your max health, passives that work for knocking down targets, or getting through their defenses in general. But yeah, that brings me to the end of this overview. Hopefully this has given you the extra detail you might have been wanting for these vocations, whether you're going to be a fighter or a warrior, or maybe just why you might pick one for a pawn. I think both look very good and should be very impactful on a party. For now though, I've been Hollow, you've been you, thanks for watching. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye